single pixel that we will extend over the entire game window and we will modify the color values and modify the how much it expands later on but but before we worry about any of that we need to actually get the texture itself so this is the logo texture and we need to create another texture to hold the pixel and you can just copy this paste it below rename texture to lowercase pixel rename the texture property to capital capital pixel and return lowercase pixel lowercase pixel is equal to value and there we go so that's it for the textures now what we need to focus on is what makes a intro screen an intro screen is it fades in and it fades out but it also has a set time limit it's not going to sit there for an hour long until you press enter or it, maybe you want that if you do you can ignore this functionality and add your own functionality to make it where you have to press enter to quit the intro screen but if you just want to fade in fade it in intro screen wait a few seconds then fade out here's what you need to do we need to create a time span object and we're just going to call it screen time and this just holds how long the screen is active it fades in it starts the screen time the screen is active when that screen time is zero we fade out and then exit the screen so now we need public property for that as well public time span capital screen time get return lowercase screen time set lowercase screen time is equal to value and that's it for that property as well now what we need is a way to fade the screen and we have several ways to do that and my sample I have a float called fade opacity and that just gives it the opacity we want to fade by so we can start that float fade opacity and then we need a public property for that as well we're just essentially going to create a public property for every object we create or variable and they all will have get and set Fade capacity, lowercase fade value. Now, an intro screen will fade in and fade out. Usually, when you think of an intro screen, it will fade in and fade out with a black color. However, sometimes you might want to fade in with blue or red or some other thing. So, here we can add our color object, and then it's just going to be a fade color. and public color capital fade color get inset get return lowercase fade color set fade color is equal to value okay so that's it for our properties and variables and objects so we can go ahead and minus that so it, we have a nice clean area to work on. Now let's worry about the constructor. And the constructor for this is going to be very simple. We're just going to create the transition on time, transition off time, and the fade opacity. So the constructor is public the class intro screen and the parentheses and remember this inherits everything that game screen has so we already have transition on time transition off time transition percent transition speed 
we have all that stuff going on in the background so we do not have to worry about that what we do have to worry about is to setting those values now an intro screen is a screen that fades in and fades out however fast you want those to fade in and fade out is up to you I found that the transition on time and transition off time to be nicely set at about 2.5 seconds so in order to set that is transition on time is equal to time span dot from seconds and just pass it 2.5 and then copy that line paste it and do the same thing for transition off time and then we set the fade opacity And I set mine at is uh, 25 percent or 0 0.25, just to give a nice small amount. So that's it for the constructor. Now what we need to do is, if we look at the game screen, what we have next is load content and unload content. Now for the intro screen itself, we do not know what content we're going to load and what we're not. However, we do know what content we're going to unload. So we can public override the unload and then we can delete the base. And we want to unload the texture and pixel object. So if texture does not equal to null, which means there is a texture set texture is equal to null. If pixel does not equal to null, which means there is a pixel set, pixel is equal to null. So we're just going to null those objects so we unload the content of them. So that's it for the unload content. Update and draw is next. And we can also add initialize, but again, for the intro screen itself, we don't know what we're going to initialize and what we're not. So we can do that in a lower level class than intro screen. But we do know that we're going to update, and we do have a specific task of what we're going to do on the update. Every screen, every intro screen will be updated a certain way. It'll always fade in, it'll always last a few seconds, and it'll always fade out. So we can override the update method and leave base except code above it. We want that to be the last line of code you use. Now, we have some screen states. Transition on, active, transition off, hidden, frozen, and inactive. Transition on and transition off are covered by the base class. In the update method. And the screen transition method. Hidden, frozen, and inactive are working on the same thing. So all we need to worry about is active. And of course we can override those and create our own additional stuff that happens while it's transitioning, while it's transitioning off, while it's hidden, frozen, and inactive. But most of the time you're going to worry about the screen's coding when it's active. So go to the intro screen and if, remember, this has everything that Screen Manager has. And one of those things is a property called Screen State. And if that Screen State is equal to active,